What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. My name is Splattercat and we're here today playing another episode of Project Zomboid. Where we- I hear multiples but I only see one. That makes me very uncomfortable. Let me do my introduction, zombie. He's like, no! You didn't talk about Costco! There, now leave me- leave me to my monologue, sir. 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 Alright. So, as a- he's had a duffel bag. He's feeling confident about himself because he has better item retention- oh crap. Are you serious right now? Alright, well it looks like we're gonna get some early episode slaughter in here. Unless these were all kind of migrating all on their own, which I readily sort of doubt. I'm not really positive that these weren't moving already, but killing the guy in the front seems to have angered them, so I guess we'll continue killing more of them, right? Because the only way to disperse anger is with violence. That's always worked out in social situations. There goes another one. If I don't knock this off, I'm gonna break all my axes here. There we go. How's our axe looking, by the way? Let me take a look here. 70%. Loverly! Let me take care of that zombie, make sure there's none behind me, and that's like the third group of zombies that we've managed to beat to death here. I finished off that last little crew before we took off in the last episode, and you'll forgive me if it sounds like I'm kind of a skipping record right now, it's because I wasn't expecting to be fighting zombies as of right now. In fact, I sort of have my headphones half on and half off, and this whole thing is just turning into a giant malfunction. But, we've managed to survive. Always a good thing in the zombie apocalypse. Let's get a window open here, because that's what we were working towards. In the last episode, we began Operation Woodlouse, which is what I'm calling it now. That's not what I called it in the last episode. I felt like I needed to give it a cool name in order to justify the activities that we're partaking in. So now it's Operation Woodlouse. It doesn't sound like we're going to get any burglar alarms, so let's get in here. And the reason we had come down here is because we wanted to find some more nails. That's right. We never seem to have enough nails, and since we can't build down by Planet Pills right now, what we're running into is that I might as well go out and find some of those nice little things that we're going to need to actually handle the construction once the zombies sort of eh, piss off, I guess, is the word that I would use for that. However, looking here at the factory, it doesn't appear as though... Hey, there's some nails. Right when I started to say there's nothing useful here... Just when I was about to make that proclamation, they decided to prove me wrong. Now these kind of look like big orange porta potties that are exporting whatever's being created inside them, but that is not the case. It is a conveyor belt for some kind of, I don't know, sawmill equipment or something. My uncle's a lumberjack, and he said he gets made, like, this is, this is a funny thing right here. He says that the other lumberjacks make fun of him because he's not missing any fingers. Like, I don't, I, I don't think that ridicule works like that. I, I would think that if you still have all of your fingers, that would be like more of the badge of pride than being one of the guys who's missing theirs. But what do I know about lumberjack culture? I'm not nearly manly enough to partake in that. So I'm going to leave that all on the side. But I'm just going to say that lumberjacks make fun of my uncle because he still has all of his fingers. At least all the other lumberjacks do. I like this place. It's got a water supply. The only thing I don't like is how this shit is still open. And that makes me a little bit antsy in the pantsy, unfortunately. But there are a lot of boxes and things to look around in, so let me do a little bit of hunting and pecking right now. And we're going to see what we can extract from this place. Anything that we can get our hands on that could be potentially useful. There's some more nails, which that was the main mission here, was to get as many nails as possible. So I don't want to lose sight of that goal. I'm excited about this episode. Any episode where I get to loot through treasure makes me happy. Let's see. Ooh, more nails. A freebie axe here. So we know that there's some extra construction supplies, there's some extra weapons, all things that we want to get our hands on, but I think some shotgun shells, we'll definitely take those. I feel good about this. I, I was a little bit, I was a doubting Thomas for a little bit, wondering if I, well, to get biblical there, but I was a doubting Thomas for a little bit, thinking that maybe this wasn't the best idea for an episode, kind of running out here and doing just who knows what, like a chicken with our head cut off. Although I've never cut the head off a chicken, I've never validated that saying. My grandma, who has, who grew up like on a farm, has assured me that they do run around for a little bit. But that was a different time. Let's... God. Let's go ahead and put some nails in the bag here. Get ourselves a little bit better of a weight allowance because I do feel like I'm sprinting through my already poorly allocated space. We do need to eat pretty shortly, but we're only peckish right now. That's not a word that we use very often in the United States. That sounds very much like a UK word. And you guys will humor me if I'm correct with that. I think peckish is a word that you guys use across the pond. 
You'll hear it on occasion over here, but it's not one that's in common usage, and the only reason I bring it up is because I guess, I don't know, well actually I shouldn't probably bring it up at all, I don't have any idea. There's a free shotgun and a free crowbar. All kinds of goodies up in this place, this is way better than the other place we had looted near Northhold. But as I was saying, I have no clue why I brought that up. Sometimes when you're talking, things just pop right out, I don't know. It's, it's tough to tell what inspires what. Let me check, oh we're only at 5 out of 8, we're still golden. I will note that maybe on a separate location, or at a separate time, I may run back out here to grab some of this other stuff. The shotgun shells are particularly of interest, because if we can keep ourselves locked and loaded down at Northhold, we're very much in a position of power, because we can clear that area out. Now, we already gave that a try a few episodes ago. It didn't go so well. It didn't go so well. The zombies seem somewhere around the middle of to gotten an upper hand, and that was me resisting a hiccup right there. The hiccup was like, no! Do it on camera! But did I just equip a nail? I can't tell if I picked up one or if I equipped it. Let's go ahead and grab them all. I think I equipped it. Let's equip that as a primary then. There we go. Why you would equip a nail, I have no idea. But apparently you have the ability to, so I'm not going to complain. I might consider busting out the... Oh, there's a door. <laughs> Always taking the long way around. I might bust that window out so that I can go get the boxes on the other side. And then there's a door right here. And it's unlocked too. God. Oh, noodles. Oh, noodles. A few more nails here. I think we've got over 100 nails now, which is really, really good. That meant that this was just an undeniable success. And it was something that I was a little worried about. The previous place, kind of the lumber yard, totally sucked for loot. There was nothing there that was even remotely useful. We found, like, a hammer and, like, three nails. I was like, for a lumber yard, this place is seriously lacking on any type of hardware. You would think they would pack a little bit heavier with the construction hardware in a location like this, but, you know, I don't know. Once again, I don't work at a lumber mill, so maybe I'm not the best judge of what should and shouldn't be in a lumber mill. My physics teacher said something about that, like there's a special test that NASA has that they give to people. He had to take it because he worked for NASA. My physics teacher apparently designed, like, Sidewinder missiles and a bunch of other crazy stuff when he first got out of college. But anyways, as I was, is this open? All right, we can fill from, can we fill from the urinal? I feel like punishing Noodles for encouraging me to break down that, nah, never mind. I'm not going to punish her. Oh, there's cabinets though. But as I was saying, apparently NASA has a test where they put you like in a room with a piece of paper and it's got like a list of like 500 items on it. And they're like, you're going to the moon. Select the most useful items. Now that whole test seems a little bit subjective to me. But, the point system apparently is pretty well worked, and I guess it's NASA, so maybe I'm underestimating my scientific... Uh, not colleagues, I'm not going to call them colleagues, because if you're working at NASA, you're so far ahead of me that I don't even know where to begin. But, what I will say... Let me loot you, machine. Machine, let me take your goodies. Let me reach inside your frosty goodness. Oh wow, this place is stacked. Let's grab those orange sodas if we can. But anyways, NASA has a test. And on this test, there's all those items, and what they've said- Oh, our duffel is full. Crap. Alright, well... Dump the pen. Well... I don't know. Maybe I should have kept the plastic bag. I wasn't expecting to completely and totally fill up my duffel bag. So 20 units. Let's have a look around. We'll head back to the house, maybe? Well, it's almost nighttime, so we actually might make the run tomorrow. I don't know if there's an upper layer to this place or an upper floor. Let's just have a look around and see. There's another door right here. Getting a little bit drowsy. Oh, there's a locker room too, interestingly enough. But let's have a look around the locker room here. You'll forgive me, I made an edit right there because my video something just died on me, I don't know. I got like a little pop-up window in the back. Luckily it's saved, so we're still good. I don't see anything in said lockers. Some smelly socks, some filthy magazines that probably not go over well with HR, but nothing really useful here. Can we sleep on that bench? Ooh, that would be really, really uncomfortable. I can see that as being an incredibly unpleasant night. Let's have a look at the other warehouse before we get on out of here. I'm interested in seeing what other things are ready to be looted. I'm going to try and remember that the left door right there... Oh. Well. The interest of not stirring up the hornet's nest here. Yikes. Alright, well... I don't want to pick up any aggro right now because we're already drowsy. We're already in a little bit of a problem and this is open down here. So I think I might actually sleep in the locker room with the door shut. 
just to make sure we don't get ourselves eaten in the night. Some zombie stumbles through the door smelling lunch, and then we're going to be first thing on the buffet, or the buffet, as they might call it in the Midwest. I don't know. Somebody told me one time, I have a friend from Minnesota, and he said that when you say pasta, like when people from Minnesota hear somebody say pasta, and this is coming from a Minnesotan, this is not me, I just want to make that clear, I'm not making this accusation, I'm just repeating what a Minnesotan told me. One time I said the word pasta in front of him, and he said, oh, you're just trying to put on airs, and I was like, putting on airs? I said, I thought that's how it's pronounced, pasta, right? P-A-S-T-A. And he goes, nah, in Minnesota we call it pasta. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I'm not putting on airs. That's how we say it here. So I guess it's just a regional thing. I mean, you don't have to accuse me of putting on airs. Seems a bit presumptuous, but as I w that's pretty much, I guess, the full length of that story. That story wasn't very interesting, was it? Oh, well. Let's bust the window off this bad boy. This place is actually sealed up a little bit tighter. See what kind of trouble we can get into in the second warehouse. I'd like to at least get a mental, kind of a mental list made. Hey, open the window back up. I'd like to get a list made of what's available in these different warehouses because I may make a second trip. I don't know. If you guys want me to do it on camera, I'll do it on camera, but I might do it off camera just to grab the supplies. I'm sort of running out of things to do in this game. If you take a look at a Project Zomboid map, we have more or less expunged many of our scavenging options, at least in the town of Muldrow. There is a city to the southeast that I've been thinking about hitting up. There's like a little suburb type deal. I do wish that there was a backpack around here too. It's disappointing. Let me go see if there's a locker room. Maybe we'll find a backpack or something in there. If this place is mirrored like the other one is. Go away, inventory window. Looks like we've got like radioactive waste in here. Or, I don't know, just barrels. Hopefully this isn't like the warehouse from Breaking Bad. Otherwise we're going to find a nice red soup in each one of those. Alright, so we're pretty hungry. These shelves seem to be fairly well stocked. This seems like a good location to come to if I ever need more construction supplies. There are a lot of nails around, and considering our hammers don't really lose any type of durability for... Well, they don't lose any durability for building. They lose durability from slugging things in the head, strangely enough, but not from building. Let's see, what other stuff? There's some watering cans and some things of that nature. Basically, it looks like there's a lot more stuff over here that still needs to be scavenged. More crowbars than we could ever... Weirdly enough, I hear a lot of zombies. I'm going to unlock the door and reclose it. Let's sneak around the back. I'm going to check this dumpster really quickly. Then we'll head over to... Let's see here. Nothing in the dumpster. All right. I'm going to head back to the locker room. Hopefully catch a few Zs. And then once we're all zzzed out... I should be able to head on back to our house. I don't know if I'm going to stock this stuff at Northhold and then make a bunch of loot runs between Northhold and Planet Pills in between here, there, and anywhere. I don't really know what the most efficient way to do this is going to be. These doors right here are locked, but those look like they're in a different positioning. Like there's a bathroom right there. Maybe I could have slept in this building. I don't know. Let's see if this door is open. Maybe we can sleep in a bathroom or something. Nope. We brought the axe to chop down a door, and I've disappointed you guys by not chopping down a single door. All of the doors remain completely and totally intact. Let's see if I can get past this zombie. It is nighttime. We're very tired, so a swarm right now would just be quite possibly the worst thing that could ever happen to us. It would be a nasty state of affairs if we ended up getting swarmed. Get this window on open. There it is, and through we go. Close that on down. Oh, there is an upper floor. Well. Oh, it's just kind of like an overseer's deal, I guess. Yeah, it's so the important guy can stand up there and tell everybody else how to do their job while simultaneously, like, holding a clipboard. I don't know. That's what managers always seem like they're doing. Have you ever noticed your, like, ratio of time spent holding a clipboard as a manager is much higher than when you were just, like, an enlisted worker? I don't know what it is about managers and clipboards. Apparently they have a lot of stuff to like write on while walking. Let's take ourselves a nice little nap now. And from here, we'll think about heading back to Northhold, I think. If we can get back to Northhold and stow some of this stuff, I might make a secondary trip back, or I might not. I am interested to see what Planet Pills is doing right now, just to see how things are holding out there. Let's eat a bag of chips really quickly. There we go. 
bag of chips has been consumed and is now being converted into waste in use or in generation of useful energy. There we go. I guess we'll head back now. I don't really see anything else that's going to be lootable here. I don't really care about making a lot of noise on the way out. I'm perfectly fine with attracting zombies as long as we're not going to be staying in town. Whenever I get stuck having to sleep in a location, though, it becomes a little bit terrifying. Make sure I don't have any sprinty little bastards over here. And cut through the center. Look at that. Belongs on a football team. If you can totally just move and juke people like that, I think there's no better place for you. She seems pretty good at clutching items in her hands, too, so... Maybe there's, well, there's no WNFL as far as I know. I mean, there might be. Then again, we all know what happened with the WNBA. That didn't turn out to be nearly as entertaining as everybody thought it would be. Neither did the XFL. I remember when they were putting out the XFL and everybody was all excited. They thought it was going to be like NFL Blitz. And they were just completely wrong about the entire thing. They were like, oh, there's going to be late hits, dude. It's going to be amazing. You're going to be able to, like, drop kick people and take the ball. And believe me, that would have been interesting. People would have lined up to watch that, but I just don't see that getting any type of corporate sponsorship. Then again, UFC does exist, although there's stuff you can't do in UFC too, like you never see anybody like headbutting anybody in UFC. For example, like throwing headbutts, it's a temptation. It would be a temptation. I guess maybe they don't allow people to throw headbutts. I don't really know how they distinguish. Like there's certain things you just don't see people doing in UFC. I'm assuming there's underlining, like there's certain moves that are just considered to be like way too dangerous maybe. I, I would guess that that's probably the thing to bear in mind. We're going to follow this road on out. It actually wasn't that difficult to get here, so I'm not that worried about making the run. We may have to stop overnight, possibly. Maybe we'll just... Yeah, let's make a run back to Planet Pills, actually. I, I think that'll probably do us for this episode. Just get all the way back down to Planet Pills, hopefully without any type of incident. We're going to have to cut through a forest right here, which is no fun. And you'll forgive me if I sound a little bit raspy as I go along. My voice hasn't been holding out very well recently. I don't know if it's just day after day of recording and I'm just starting to get like little calluses or something on my vocal cords or what it is, but I tend to record like an hour and a half at a time and it's starting to wear on me. I don't I don't really know what I should. I, there's probably like, I remember when I was playing in a band a long time ago, our vocalist had like this spray. It was sort of like Gorilla Snot, like guitarists use this thing called Gorilla Snot to help yourself slide all over the frets a little bit quicker. It's kind of a... It's kind of a cheat for growing calluses. I have friends that have, they play guitar, but they have no calluses whatsoever because they always use Gorilla Snot or Monkey Snot or whatever the hell it's called. And it's sort of like that for vocalists. You spray it down your throat, and apparently it makes your throat feel all better. I don't know how well it works or whatnot, but I might think about investing in something like that. I'm going to have to go this way. And if there's a bunch of zombies right here, well, we may bite the old bullet, unfortunately. If we're going back to Planet Pills... I'm trying to think about what my best route is going to be here. I don't know if this is the highway I want, or if this is a completely different highway. Let me get on the highway, and I'll keep an eye on the sidelining buildings here and figure out if it's the right one or the wrong one. I get disoriented very easily in this game. That's one of the strange things I've noticed is, like, no matter how much I run around the map, I find myself very much getting lost. Even so, I, I can find this main highway. I'm usually pretty good to go. But as of right now, I'm not recognizing any of the landmarks, but that might just be... Maybe this is the Waffle House? Yeah, it is. All right. So I had a feeling that this was the Waffle House and I knew where I was. Just wanted to make absolutely sure. I think we'll be able to make it back to Planet Pills in time for supper, possibly, if we can actually make this run efficiently. Unfortunately, I ran out of duffel bag space and it kind of waylaid our last journey. Maybe I'll pick up a plastic bag or something on the way for my next run. That is a really, really cumbersome trip, though. That's not a trip that's easy to make. It's hard on the knees. Also, she doesn't like running, so all this time I spend with my shift key, my shift key is just in tatters at this point. Yikes. Well, they seem to have moved around a tad. At the bare minimum, that's nice. I remember there being a big-ass horde down here, so let's be careful as we come around this corner. I don't want to attract any undue attention. I'm hoping there's been at least a couple mass migrations so that we can get ourselves at least constructing something at Planet Pills. Like, I keep telling you, I'm going to do stuff in between episodes, but I haven't been able to. There's just too many zombies around. The second I start tap, tap, tapping away and doing a little bit of carpentry, I find that they just come down on me like a big old bag of bricks covered in hammers. So that's both the metaphor for coming down on you like a bag of hammers and also a bag of bricks combined, which means you have a force multiplier. In any case, never a good thing when we're talking about blunt objects falling towards you in receptacles of a baggage nature. 
now that we're almost there, we're actually making pretty good time. I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of this episode. I've kind of got to think about that. We're faced with a couple of options. We may try to just construct anyways, and we'll spend the rest of the day doing that, and then anything that comes down the pipe, we'll just shoot at it maybe. We've got 24 shotgun shells, so I think we can run off a few more zombies if we really need to. Our shotgun shell supply... We are quite shelled. We have more shells than the Ninja Turtles, so, and that's not that many. I guess that metaphor probably wouldn't work. More shells than a Galapagos beach, maybe? Because that's where the turtles, like, do their little floppy hoppy thing while they try and lay all their eggs. Which, by the way, I saw a thing on Imager about that, or Imager, I guess is how you say it. I saw something on Imager about that, where it's like this dude who just, like, manhandled this turtle and helped it go back to sea. It was pretty epic. I would have done the same thing. I like sea turtles. Never had the opportunity to swim with sea turtles. I did swim with an eel one time, though, which was pretty terrifying, actually. They're a lot bigger when you're in the ocean with them and they swim by you than you would assume. They are kind of scary. Just a little splatter tip right there. I was in... Well, I was, I was snorkeling at an undisclosed location, and there was, like, this big archway underwater. It was kind of like a... Yeah, that's... I, there's no more no more needed. That's, there's no more description needed. It was like a stone archway underwater. And I was like, you know what would be badass if I could jump down into that or swim down underneath it? It was like 10 feet down, so it was, you know, there's a little bit of pressure. But I was like, it'll be badass if I can swim down there and go underneath the arch. Well, apparently an eel had the same idea. And when I went down to swim underneath the arch, the eel decided to vacate his location. He thought I was just like terrifying. He was like, oh my god, or my gird. You know, he took off. And now this is probably like an eight or nine foot eel. And he didn't attack me, which was really kind of a surprise because everything I've ever read about eels makes it sound like they're sort of aggressive. But he actually wasn't. He just swam out. He took off. He was more afraid of me than I was of him, which is usually the case with most animals. But he took off, and I almost... Well, I'm pretty sure I left a little warm spot in the ocean right there. The snorkelers of the future probably swam past and were like, that's weird, the temperature went up all of a sudden. But that's my story. About the time that I met an Unagi... And I couldn't help but have flashbacks to Mario 64. Unagi was terrifying as hell. I don't know if you guys had that same reaction to Unagi, but Unagi creeped the hell out of me when I was playing in 64 as like a 14-year-old. Like, something about that giant eel in that water level was just deeply, deeply unpleasant. Then again, I think humans were programmed in certain ways just to be, like, worried when we're in the ocean. It's not a good place for us. Let's go ahead and store away the rest of this stuff, and then we'll take stock of what we've got going in the side yard. Maybe chop up some logs. We've got a couple minutes left in the episode, and I, I have no idea what I want to do with it. I need to come up with a new location for the rest of my nails and things. This cabinet's filling up, too. Unfortunately, most of my cabinets seem to already be, you know, in a pretty much utilitarian fix, or they seem to be more or less allocated. Maybe something downstairs so I don't have to walk as far when I'm carrying some of this stuff. This thing's looking like a pretty good spot to put things in. So we'll dump all the nails off there. This is going to take us a little bit of time, and I apologize for all the inventory management at the end of this episode, but I figured the scavenging would take a little bit longer, and it, when that wasn't the case, well, here we are. Once I get these stored away, we'll put all of our weapons out. Maybe we'll go hunt that horde a little bit further. I want to go see if the horde is still on our block. If it's managed to leave and go somewhere else, then we have nothing to worry about, and I can begin doing a little bit of construction in between episodes. However... If they're still just kind of bumming around over there, panhandling on the corner, and generally just making a nuisance of themselves, like, the zombies have taken to playing those stupid keg drums on the corner. Like, if you ever go to, like, a populous area, there's always that dude that's playing bucket drums. Like, and there's just the most random spot. Like, he'll always be next to, like, a parking garage, which I guess isn't that bad of a spot, but you'd figure he'd find, like, a Costco or, like, a Walmart somewhere to sit in front of. Bigger throughput. Now that we've got that put away... But yeah, the zombies have taken to playing bucket drums, and it's just been driving me nuts all day and all night. Sleep has been next to impossible. Let's throw the rest of these up in here. Then again, they aren't quite good at syncopation, so I will give them that. Credit where credit is due, fist bump zombies, syncopation rules. Let me close that door, and then we'll see what else we can do here. I'm getting a little bit drowsy. It's pretty early to get drowsy, 2.30 in the afternoon. It's starting to sound like me once college is back in, getting all drowsy at like 1.45 for no apparent reason. Let me dump the rest of the shotgun shells in here. And once all of those are in place, put the newspaper back where it goes. Well, we might need it. We're going to be sitting tight for quite a ways in reality. Let me throw the rest of these water bottles in here. So there's two of those. Not a whole lot of weight left here. I'm actually going to have to put the orange sodas elsewhere. 
There seemed to be some contention about my I love orange soda comments. Different strokes for different folks, but man, I love me some orange soda. I'll tell you that right now. You put a two liter orange soda at my house, it's probably not going to be there that long. Unless it goes flat, and then it'll be there forever. I don't like drinking things that have gone flat. I know some people that just treat it like juice. It's just like orange juice or like cherry juice whenever their soda loses the carbonation, but not me. Uh-uh-uh. Let's drop these up in here. We'll throw the orange soda up in there as well. It sounds like we got a little bit of rain going on. Hopefully the gutters don't get clogged. I have clean gutters and it's a deeply unpleasant experience. The random dead matter that you find up in those things is very, very nasty. Throw the pen in there. Hopefully there's no gunshots or anything in the next little bit. And let's just hang out for a moment. So we're just going to chill for just a tad of a bit. Hopefully getting ourselves up to the exhausted level because... Honestly, we can't go to sleep at 2.30 in the afternoon. That'll mess our sleep habits up just royally. We will just be in a really, really bad situation. Did I put all of my water bottles in there? Hold on. Nope, I've made a mistake. Let's see here. Water bottle, there you are. Come with me, water bottle. Also refill. There we go. We're very tired. Sometimes when they have the music, I definitely think I hear the sound of knocking. And then it actually turns out that there's no knocking. And that is actually a deeply... It's its pretty unnerving. It's pretty unnerving. Read this newspaper really quickly so that I'm not bored. We are now exhausted, and it's still not late enough to where I feel comfortable with anything that's going on. I don't really want to go to sleep right now. 10 o'clock, we might be able to make it till morning, although I can't guarantee. Let me close that door off in case that knocking is actually a real threat. And let's do this thing. Hopefully we'll make it to like 8. Hey, we made it till 9. Got a nice sleep in. Let's go take a look around the block, and that's going to be the last thing we do for this episode. Once I have a little look-see around, we'll decide what we're going to do in the next episode. Figure out if there's any way to clear these guys out. Oh, they've actually moved closer to us. That's pleasant. Alright. So we do still have zombies on the premises, which means I can't build. I hate the fact that they're really sort of obscuring my goals here, and there's so many of them. God... Look at them all. I really wish I could clear this neighborhood out, but look at the bloodbath we've caused, and we still haven't even made, like, a sizable dent in any of them. Like, the horde seems to be the same size that it was before. But I guess I'll think about that for the next episode. We'll try and decide whether we want to just blast our way out of this and risk running out of ammo, because we already tried that approach, and it doesn't appear to have helped at all. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle. It's always a pleasure to have you here in Moldrog, Moldrow, Moldrag... Knox County is the easier. I like saying Knox County. It's a little bit easier than that weird word with all of its A, U's, and G's, and H's. I'll see you guys next time, and take care out there, everybody.